Sometimes I get a question that, hey, why do I need to learn or use a framework like React or Vue or Svelte or Angular at all? I mean, why don't people just use vanilla JavaScript and do make their applications in that particular thing as only? Why actually go through so much abstraction, so many layers of you know, code and having a library in place and so on. And in this video, with the help of an example, I want to clear out why you need a framework or a library almost always when you are building a project. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now, before we get started into the debate why you need that, let me just remind you that abstractions are everywhere in computers, right? So you start with a bare metal, which you have the hardware. On top of that, in order to communicate with the hardware, you have your CPU, right? CPU works with the help of assembly language, for example, let's say, and I'm, I'm probably skipping a few abstractions in between. Assembly can be coded into something like C or C++, which gives the compiler. The compiler compiles it down to assembly or Rust, you know, the new player in the town. This probably could be built on top of something like Chrome browser, which then provides you the ability to run JavaScript. And with JavaScript, you can create a button or a cat image right so whatever the ui you create over here this has to go through so many abstractions just to render a dummy cat button or a dummy cat image over here so what you essentially are doing when you're using a framework is you're adding an abstraction over here so instead of the button directly what you have is react and then a button right so whatever button code you are writing in in the jsx in the react it transpiles to javascript sends to chrome Chrome under the hood draws it on the screen using the Windows or Mac APIs, which are written in C, C++, assembly, CPU, and the monitor, the display. Now, the purpose of each of these abstractions, which you see over here, is to ease and simplify the final goal, right? Now, the final goal for you in this case is a button in this case, right? React, does it simplify that? Does it ease that? Not just the create of creating of button, sure, but in a lot of cases, it will make sense. I'll give you an example. But the way you determine whether you need a framework or not is you check this condition. The framework which I'm using, is it easing the process, whether that's in terms of functionality or security or whatever, or is it simplifying the process or not? If both of the answer are false, I mean, if they're not doing it, then you don't need the framework, right? You don't need that particular abstraction. In case of React, let's take an example. Let's take an example of this code damn playground, which is developed, right? Now this full playground is actually built in React, React components. Each of these things which you're seeing, which you're able to resize and increase and decrease the size are individual React components. The sockets which you see here, the individual sockets, each one of these sockets has been constructed inside React using a hook called as use WebSocket. Now what this hook does, I mean, I'm not getting into the details of how use WebSocket works, but this hook right here allows me to use WebSockets in React in a declarative fashion. That means I don't have to kind of maintain the socket state all the time if I don't want to. I can, however, still maintain the socket state. I can cancel the socket and, you know, close the socket and send message, receive messages. But if it unmounts or if I change the URL directly, the ability to close the socket and again open it is pretty much baked into the framework. Similarly, let's say this component over here, I'm going to, going to create a file. I'm going to say, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna write it to hello world.html, right? I did something over this WebSocket, but this WebSocket, which, are, which is a diff different socket, you can see the terminal one is this, and the file transfer is this. So these two sockets obviously share some data, but let's say if I want to have some of the actions here automatically coordinated inside this component. That can only be done if you're able to share these data between components and you are able to create a application, a framework in such a way where you have architected the state in some sort of central place. And the only reason we are also able to talk about something like this is because a framework makes it easy to update stuff. When I'm clicking over here, you see this middle area changes. When I click over here or when I create a folder over here, you can see something else might change inside the website. So I can just create it file.txt if i select this write something 
even though I'm writing it over here, it gets transferred via WebSocket, which has been opened by this component. How? Because these two components are sharing the same socket. You can see the contents are written. This is one of the examples on CodeDAM where I couldn't possibly imagine creating this interface in a scalable way. Again, just to emphasize on the word scalable, in a scalable and maintainable way without the use of a framework like React or a library like React. Why? Because React eased the process of creating all these components and simplified it for us to maintain the code further. If I want to add a new feature or a new addition, which might require some sort of update triggering something else in some other component, let's say if this is the hierarchy of the website somehow, if this component over here wants to talk to this component right here, all it has to do is to coordinate with a central store, which might be a React context or Redux or whatever, send a message over here and this component receives and they are able to talk. Right. This is pretty much very impossible to scale properly if you are writing vanilla JavaScript. I mean, obviously you can do everything because this layer is before React. So, so this, this React layer over here is obviously a subset of what you can do with JavaScript. But at the end of the day, you have to match or you have to prioritize the speed of development over the surface area of possibilities of development. Because if you want to have a 100% surface area of possibility of development, you're probably writing code over here inside assembly, not on that layer. Now, when do you determine that you don't need a framework? Well, like I said before, if the framework or if the app which you're building is so simple, that it actually complicates the process when you introduce a framework, then you probably don't need that. For example, a simple static landing page might be one, although it's also like becoming a popular choice now to use Next.js and statically export that. But maybe a simple static page or maybe something which just involves HTML plus CSS, you know, a landing template, a countdown, a counter, a timer, you pretty much don't need a lot of React and framework and this and that for that because it won't help you either, right? Because if you're writing the logic of a counter, for example, this is in fact JavaScript, right? The React part is probably would be used where you would need to update the counter, but it will make it more complicated than it would be if you just write it directly in JavaScript. So again, I guess this framework is pretty much sufficient to determine when you need a framework or a library or not. If it eases the process and simplifies it, you need a library. And in most of the cases, it would. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully the confusion is clear now, why you need frameworks, why you don't need frameworks. If you ever think frameworks are useless, I would highly, highly suggest you to try to create a UI like CodeDAM's playground interface or any complex UI which you can see out there without the help of any framework like React or Svelte or Vue.js. And not just create, but also create it in a maintainable state that when someone else is working on your code, they don't have to spend days or weeks figuring out what is exactly going on. So that is all for this video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel boost and that is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.